Welcome to Press Any Button. I'm Eric. I'm Nikki. And I'm Jennifer. Special guest, Jen. Yeah, special guest, Jen. <laughs> and this week we're talking about Pokemon Go. So Pokemon Go is a 2016 mobile game developed and published by Niantic in collaboration with Nintendo and the Pokemon Company for iOS and Android devices. It uses mobile devices with GPS to locate, capture, train, and battle Pokemon, which appear as if they're in the player's real-world location. The game is free to play. It uses a freemium business model combined with local advertising and supports in-app purchases for additional in-game items. Whew, that was a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, yeah, uh, don't really have to worry about spoilers or anything this week. Yeah. I mean, there is a story there, but I don't think it's like what people are really playing the game for. <laughs> I think I mostly have just clicked really quick whenever uh, Professor Willow has like tried to talk to me. <laughs> it's not really my thing. You could learn fun facts from him. Yeah. <laughs> so as you guys notice, we have Jen here all the way from California. Thank you for having me. As our guest. <laughs> Do you remember where in California? Yeah. A Tuscadero? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, I didn't know this. I, I didn't know this was a quiz. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> a Tuscadero, yes, the central coast of California. So, Jen, can you just tell us like a little bit about your history with the game and why you like it? Sure, absolutely. So, I started playing the game the day after it was released, and I didn't realize that at first. When I was a kid, my little brother Chase, who you know, mm -hmm. um, used to play Pokemon cards, and I always took all of his extra cards. <laughs> and so the Generation 1, Kanto, the 151 OG Pokemon, I knew all of them from the time I was a child. When they released the game, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really cool. I'll go in and I can collect Pokemon, just like I, I used to scrape all the scraps from <laughs> Chase's <laughs> Pokemon. Just like you used to collect cards back in the day. Exactly. So I downloaded the app, started catching Pokemon. And the thing that I liked about it the most is at the time, my daughter was very young and it was a game that I could play as much or as little as I wanted. I could open the app for two minutes and close it. I could open the app for 10 minutes and close it. I could open it at home. I could open it while we're out and about. And there wasn't any progression that I needed to follow. I didn't need to save the game in the middle of anything. So it was the combination of I'm an animal lover. I love to collect things. And it's something that I can do at basically any point in time. And as you know, you've traveled around with me. <laughs> if we're in a new place, <laughs> oh yeah, Texas to Vegas, then I open the app and see what's up and see what the Pokemon are like in that area. So I like to, uh, to collect virtual animals in every place I go. I know. Nice, yeah. And it's crazy because Josh just turned, well, not just turned, but... She turned eight, right? Her last birthday. And so now it's like when you started playing the game, she was a baby. But now you can actually play the game with her because yep. she's like, you know, able to play it now. I created an account for her and I let her pick what the avatar wears. And then if I catch a cool Pokemon, I'm like, hey, Joss, look what I called. And maybe she's interested. Maybe she's not. But it's <laughs> <laughs> it's something else that I can do. So it's it's fun. Nice. Maybe one day she'll get more into it, but right now her attention span is like one minute long. So <laughs> it'll be like Beanie Babies. She she'll appreciate it in ten years when she opens the app and realizes that I got her a, a shiny Rayquaza and she didn't know that she needed to <laughs> value it when she was eight years old. <laughs> She's like, thanks, mom. You're the best. <laughs> and That's you'll nice. be like, this is the day I've been waiting for. <laughs> Vindication. Yes. So are you guys uh, excited to learn the history of Pokemon Go and like how it got made? Yeah, definitely. Sure. I want to start in 2010, and I only want to start here because I do think it's important. In 2010, Google was encouraging its employees to form startups for a variety of projects, and John Hank founded Niantic Labs basically because he worked for Google, and they were like, hey, make a startup, and so this was kind of his idea. 
Wait, the... so does Google own Niantic? So at the beginning, they did own Niantic, but we'll get into some of that a little bit later. Just you know, okay, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. a progression. <laughs> okay. So Jump it's, in the gun a yeah, little bit. It started Sorry. out, yeah, being owned by Google and being created because Google was encouraging its employees to start their own companies. And so when Niantic started in 2010, they were a pretty small team. And by the time they released their first game called Ingress, they still only had about 35 employees. So... Started out as kind of like a small startup company, but I thought that was kind of cool that Google was enc encouraging its employees to form a startup and then like we get cool games because of it. <laughs> I mean, if it's like Google now owns that startup though, it's like, yeah, it's, it definitely benefits Google too. <laughs> but you can definitely see how Google and their mapping and their GPS system definitely oh, like yeah. lended its hand to this company and like how they were able to create games such as Ingress and Pokemon Go and the Harry Potter game that they did also. So Oh yeah, I forgot about the Harry Potter. Game. Yeah, so I just want to touch on Ingress just real quick because you know, Ingress walked so Pokemon Go could run. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this game has a lot of similar features because it uses GPS capabilities. It has portals you can interact with, kind of like Pokestops and things like that. So they were able to kind of use this game in a way to help make Pokemon Go. Did you ever play Ingress at all? No, I had never even heard of that game until I started doing the history <laughs> for Pokemon Go. And, you know, obviously know about it now. But have you ever heard of it before? Uh, I have not. Yeah. Jen, have you ever heard of Ingress? I have only because when you go to um, the screen on Pokemon Go that shows your avatar and your buddy, if you click on the Niantic, like, icon at the top it'll show your levels for each game that they have so like ingress is on there pikmin bloom is on there that's another oh, game yeah, I, I forgot guess. about that one and then the harry potter one i used to have that on there i don't know what happened i must have deleted the app and it's not on there so it's like i see these other games on there that are like basically they're advertising to you like hey we have these other games but it'll also show you like what your levels are and stuff on each one like within the game that's cool yeah, I didn't know they owned all those different games. I kind of yeah. thought they were like different companies making them, but that kind of makes a lot of sense that they're very similar. Yeah, and they all kind of use the same GPS sort of system. So like a Pokestop will also be, um, I forgot what it's called in the Harry Potter game, but it'll be like a similar thing in the Harry Potter game where you're doing almost the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so fast forward to 2014. We have a guy that works at Nintendo by the name of Soroto Iwata and a guy that works for the Pokemon company named Tsunzaki Ishihara. <laughs> Probably mispronounced those, but I did my best. <laughs> but for April Fool's Day, they did a collaboration with Google called Google Maps Pokemon Challenge. And so that was sort of like a rough draft prank sort of version of pokemon go and that kind of you know so what was, was the start. what was the pokemon challenge do you remember i did not get to play it so i don't know i'm assuming it was just like a mini pokemon go sort of thing but i actually didn't get to play that i'm assuming you didn't either <laughs> no, i have no idea but this is like the second or third game now we've talked about that started as an april fool's day prank oh, yeah. <laughs> so apparently that's like a really popular way to start games <laughs> so had a full boyfriend the murder of sonic the hedgehog mm -hmm. pokemon go now. Now, now pokemon go is there another one i think that... there was others but yeah. i can't rem remember them all off the top of my head there's nothing that sparks creation like spite and just like being able to play some kind of joke on your friends like that's when you're most creative <laughs> exactly <laughs> spite yeah so in 2015, Niantic is now its own company. It's separate from Google. See, we got there, Eric. <laughs> How did they separate from Google, though? So they actually did the Alphabet uh, Inc. or whatever is like Google's parent company. They did a big re 
kind of shuffling of all their companies and everything and like reorganize everything. And so this was an opportunity for Niantic to kind of branch off onto their own separate thing. And when this happened, Nintendo and the Pokemon company committed to investing $30 million into whatever their next project was going to be. Wow. I'm going to assume they kind of had an inkling of what that project was going to be, <laughs> considering the two companies it was. But they gave $20 million up front. Wow. Yeah. yeah, to start whatever their next project was going to be. That's a lot of belief in the form of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's already a crazy amount of money. But because those two companies invested, it also encouraged other industry professionals <laughs> to contribute money because they wanted to be on like the board and stuff like that. So they actually, they ended up getting a lot of money and a lot of investments happening. So at this point, Niantic is rolling in the dough. <laughs> they have got <laughs> over $30 million and 20 million to start with to start doing a game. And at this time, surprise, surprise, <laughs> they announced that they're gonna develop a game called Pokemon Go. Okay, yeah. So, I thought that that was pretty interesting that they had so much faith in this company and this game that they invested that much money. That really says a lot, like a lot of hope. <laughs> this yeah. is going to do really good. So it took about two years for the game to be made. And it was released in the U.S. on July 6, 2016. And pretty much by 2017... It had been released worldwide for the most part. There's some countries where it's banned and stuff like that, but... Wait, it got banned in other countries? Yeah, it was banned in uh, some countries just for, like, security reasons and stuff. Like Pakistan, but that's not that surprising, is okay, it? Yeah, you I probably guess not. don't want to be wandering on other people's properties, like, not paying attention to where you're going <laughs> and stuff in some countries, I would imagine. Hmm. <laughs> Two months after... It was launched. The game had over 500 million downloads. And as of 2022, it surpassed 1 billion downloads. Wow. Yeah. That's nuts. Yeah. I remember the way I had heard about it was through Reddit. <laughs> like uh, someone made a post about catching a Pokemon like at 1 a.m. like in their <laughs> front yard and they had a picture of it. And it was just like one of those like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't know what this is, but it looks amazing. I remember when it came out, just all my friends were playing it. You know, like everyone was playing it um, and everyone was sharing their friend codes. So like we're everyone's friends. And I don't know, it was super fun when it came out. It's fun to have things that you can do with your friends and stuff. Yeah, kind of more of a social game. Yeah. Since the release, uh, since 20. 16 2017 obviously the game has kept going with updates new content being added special events new story new gameplay and it actually just celebrated its seventh birthday wow so happy birthday pokemon go <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i can't believe it's already been seven years since this game has been out like it just yeah. doesn't seem that long i would not have predicted that it would still be going after that many years i kind of thought eventually like the user base might die down or something and then they'd move on to another another kind of like flash in the pan type game you or thought something. it was gonna be like a fad yeah yeah i kind of assume like people would pick up for a while and then eventually it'd get put down but I guess it's not going away, <laughs> which is pretty amazing. No, it still has a really good amount of monthly users. So I think it's still going pretty strong. Cool. I think people pick it up here and there. One thing that I've seen over time is I'll have friends that'll download it and they'll be super into it. And then after a few months, they kind of stop playing and you don't hear from them. And then like somebody else will pick it up. So I, I think it's interesting to find out why people start playing after so long because most of the time when I meet somebody new and they're like what are you doing and I'm like oh I'm playing P Pokemon Go they say oh is that still around 
it didn't die. I mean, no. I don't know how that works, but uh, <laughs> as long as, as as long as they keep updating the apps to be compatible with our operating systems, it's it's still chugging along. Yeah, I'm definitely guilty of putting it down and picking it up multiple times, maybe five or six different times. Yeah, same. For me, I just like having people to play it with, but also we don't really have any pokey stops or anything near our house. So if we need to play, we actually have to get in our car, go to a park, go somewhere, you know, which makes it just a little more difficult. I mean, we don't than... have to get in the car. We could walk somewhere, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could, but, you know, it's like 90 degrees here. So <laughs> That's actually a really good point because one of the reasons it's so easy for me to play is that I work on a college campus and it's pokey stops and gyms for days. Yeah. If you are in the middle of the college campus where I'm at and you open up the app and you look around, there's like 50 things that you could do, which means that I have endless supplies, endless access to anything that I need in the game so that it's just so easy for me to play. But it is difficult if you weren't planning on leaving for the day. Joss and Austin are very used to me at nine o'clock at night saying, I haven't left the house today. I got to go drive down the street and spin a pokey stop. I'll be back in two minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's great. <laughs> but I did notice when, we're, when I'm playing and like we do go to a park or something, I'm not the only one playing Pokemon Go. I can tell other people are playing it. And like the other day I went by myself just to go get some more balls. I ran out of balls. So I was like, well, I literally can't do anything until I get more of these. <laughs> and there was like a raid or something going on. And I saw like a group of people together and like, they were like, oh, what level are you? Blah, blah, blah. So like, I knew they were playing Pokemon Go, like, cause I could see it on their phones and also like context to what they were saying. <laughs> Those gangs of teens hanging out. Just playing Pokemon Go. They did look like they were college <laughs> age, but they weren't like super duper young. Not like kids, kids, you know. <laughs> but yeah. So are you guys ready for some fun facts? Ooh, fun facts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So f the first uh, fun fact, number one, I it's kind of like a little bit of trivia. So I'm going to ask you guys to give me your guess first. So Okay. The record for the most Pokemon caught in a single day is held by a user by the name of Toro Toroto. <laughs> so can you guys guess like what you think the record would be for the most amount of Pokemon caught in 24 hours? And that that's a tough question because I feel like there's a really potentially high bar, like a ridiculously high <laughs> bar. Like if you were just like driving around slow or someone was driving for you, you know, you're potentially like, I don't know, just have unlimited Pokemon uh, <laughs> supplies if you're near Poke Stops and stuff like that. I could be really high. So I am going to guess 1,400. 1,400. Okay. Jen, what do you think? I also preface my answer with, I think it depends on whether they're using third-party app to assist them. They call that spoofing. Ooh, okay. Or if it's just on their own. It's really hard if you just are catching Pokemon on your own to catch more than three or 400 in a day. So I think I would say naturally <laughs> versus spoofing, maybe like six or 800. So the record is actually 11,400. Dang. As far as I know, he wasn't, what did you call it? Spoofing or? Yeah, they call it spoofing. Yeah. But I don't know. I didn't look that far into it. So, but they said you could catch up to eight Pokemon a minute. And I don't know what the math on that is. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I read. So there's no eating, no sleeping, no bathroom breaks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just staying up 24 hours. Just catching Pokemon. They also have auto catching devices too, so that you don't have to click on a Pokemon. You can just walk around, and if there are Pokemon nearby you, the auto catch feature will just catch them. So you don't go through all the screens and the animation that could take a while. Yeah. And some of those devices are legal, which he, he could use for that too. So that would also enhance the numbers. Yeah. Maybe they were using something like that because I don't know. I don't have the stamina for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a pretty ridiculous amount all right fun fact number two did you know that there's a pokey gym 
situated in the middle of the White House where the president lives. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would hope that would be like a, at least a gym and just not like a regular pokey stop. I know, but who who can get that? Who can get that unless you work at the White House? Or you're the president or something. <laughs> like, how are you going to be able to get that gem? I'm surprised they haven't had it removed. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, because you can request for gems to be removed. So I, I've, I've seen gems exist and then not exist because they were on, like, a church property or something where that business didn't want um, Pokemon players coming and going. That's probably good. Yeah. Well, the White House obviously wants it there for some reason. Because <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Okay. <laughs> That's actually not the only strange place where there's Poke Gems located. There's gems in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> there's also a Poke Gem at the Pentagon. So Pokemon could get into all of the government places, I guess. If yeah. you need a spy, <laughs> just get a Pokemon. <laughs> Instead of putting on like a janitor's costume, as you see in the movies, and like sneaking into the Pentagon, it's just like you and your phone, like really blatantly playing Pokemon Go. Like, I'm just here to catch the Pokemon. Yeah. I'm not doing anything <laughs> nefarious at all. I swear. I'm just dropping my Pokemon off at the gym. It's all right, guys. <laughs> I just need them coins. I need them coins. <laughs> <laughs> I just need that candy. <laughs> Fun fact number three, if you make Pikachu your buddy and you walk for a long distance enough to earn 10 candies, Pikachu will ride on your trainer's shoulder instead of walking alongside of you. Did you know that? <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I, I did. Yeah, Evie does that too. Yeah, I feel like you would know that, oh, yeah. Jen. <laughs> so if you use Pikachu, does he walk on your shoulder? Yeah, so Pikachu, um, I think Eevee does, will ride on your shoulder. I think there's a couple of more that will, too. One of the bug Pokemon will. And then I think you carry Togepi like Misty did in the series. Oh, that's cool. The other fun fact about Pikachu is something that's, like, threaded throughout the game. So depending on whether some Pokemon are male or female, they have physical characteristics that are different. So if you catch a female Pikachu, there's indention in the end of the tail. And if it's male, it's just a straight tail. Mm -hmm. Eevee has, like, uh, that feature, too, where there's a different, like, pattern in the tail. Magikarp is like that, too. Like, the whiskers are white or gold depending on if it's male or female oh. so there's there's some like cool little things like in the game if you really pay attention to find out that they really have more thought into it than you think that they would yeah yeah that's pretty neat yeah that is pretty cool bonus fun facts <laughs> <laughs> bonus. fun fact number four as of march 27th of this year there are a total of 786 Pokemon that you could possibly Dang. catch. So yeah, that's that's a pretty good amount. Yeah, so it's not all the Pokemon that exist yet, but they're like getting really close. I'm start I'm starting to get scared actually. <laughs> trying to think of how many I got. I think it's like around 400 or 300. I don't even know how many I've caught. Jen, how many have you caught? So the numbers in the game look a little bit different, and I think it may be because there are there's some Pokemon that they've actually created specifically for the game, or they've created in like one particular um, video game, and they don't exist in like the other worlds quite yet. So mm -hmm. if you look at the Pokédex, I have caught 784. Four Ooh, so close. different Pokemon, <laughs> but that's not all of them. Like I yeah. still have quite a few that I haven't gotten because of like regionals or special Pokemon that it takes a really long time to get whatever you've got to get to get to them. Yeah. Yeah. So I have 784 out of, like you said, your number was 786, but I think there's a little bit more to it and they haven't released all the Pokemon that exist in some of the new generations yet. So yeah. Dang. That's nuts. And then my last fun fact is months after the game was released, players walked about 2.8 billion miles, <laughs> hitting 5.4 billion miles by the end of just 2016. So Pokemon Go is really helping people get their steps in. Yeah, that's definitely a really good positive about the game is it does encourage you to get out and walk or run. Mm-hmm. 
and like nature. <laughs> oh my gosh. Which is terrible, but also probably good for you. <laughs> so I think it's good. That's probably one of the reasons I put the game down sometimes. I'm just like, uh, go outside. Fuck that. <laughs> oh, Eric. And I usually play from my couch unless I really have to, to do something. Some of the research tasks require you like spin stops and stuff. Over time, as the game has updated, it's recognized how much activity is at my house. And it's increased <laughs> the amount of Pokemon that'll spawn in my house because there's more than one account that plays in this area. Yeah. So it really looks like a lot of people are playing here, but it's really just me by myself. Um, <laughs> I will I will add to the fun facts of myself. Yeah. So in the in the game right now, it says that I've walked nine thousand two hundred and sixty one point six kilometers Whoa. in the game. That equates to five thousand seven hundred and fifty four point eight miles. Whoa. Dang. That's Dang. just. With what it's registered in the game. So that's yeah. seven years of blood, sweat, and tears to my Pokemon <laughs> homies. <laughs> imagine that's a lot like, of speed walking around Vegas. <laughs> imagine how many miles it's probably missed, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely. I know. Just when you guys went to Disney, you probably... I can't even imagine how much, how many miles you guys walked just when you were at Disney yeah. for a week. <laughs> Those were great because one of the features of the game is they do, um, they call it Adventure Sync. And so every Monday, I think at 10 a.m., it gives you re rewards for how far you've walked that week. And when we did Disney and it, it was Universal Studios, Disney, six days, six parks, and that Adventure Sync, I think I got over 100 kilometers for that week and usually i get between like 30 and 40 a week yeah so it was it was insane i got Crazy. lots of extra rewards that week Dang. that's awesome that's awesome yeah was there any special pokemon that are just at like disney <laughs> there aren't but there are regional ones that are in that area so corsala it looks like it's pink and it looks like a piece of coral Mm -hmm. You can catch it on the, the south end of Texas and in Florida. And those two trips where we went to Texas a couple of years ago and when I went to Disney were the only two times I've ever gotten to catch it. So that's always fun to see something that you don't normally see. Yeah, yeah, that is cool. And that is one of the cool aspects about the game is there just, if you ever go to a new area, yeah, like a new part of the country or another country entirely, there's a possibility of catching and seeing new Pokemon, which is really cool. Yeah. yeah. So it sounds like we want to go ahead and start talking about the pros since we're already talking about these things that we like. Yeah. But actually my first pro goes along with that because it is that it motivates you to walk around and explore your city and just get out the house. If you work from home, that's a good thing for me because <laughs> some days <laughs> I don't leave the house. So it's nice to have like something to, a reason to get out, you know, yeah. not just like to go shopping or like, you know, just do something that's going to cost money. <laughs> Yeah, that is a, a really positive. And, you know, it was an excuse for us to go to the park today, too, which is nice. Yeah. So what about you, Jen? I think I mentioned my first pro was the fact that I can kind of pick it up and put it down whenever I want. And I don't have to commit any time to it unless I really want to. Not that I ever don't want to commit time to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I, I like that aspect of it above a lot of the other games that I played as a kid where you play, you know, until a point where you have to save a game or you have to start the the level over or whatever the case may be. So for this one, there's endless opportunities, but there's also at any given point, you can put it down and not pick it up for two years and it won't matter. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah. You can even play it while you're playing other video games. <laughs> like I was today, I was like playing Overwatch, but then when I would die on Overwatch, I would just go over to Pokemon Go, <laughs> catch a Pokemon, and then go back. <laughs> I um, I like that I can play it while I'm recording podcasts too. That's great. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I see you over there. <laughs> yeah. For me, I really like the fact that you can play this game in a lot of different ways. Uh, you can choose to be more social with it and like trade with people and like do raids with them and stuff. You can play as more of a collector where you're just, you know, not really doing more of the social stuff, but you, you know, you're just collecting and then, yeah, I'm building up your different inventory of Pokemon. 
and then you can get into like more of the battling aspects, you know, by challenging gyms and just doing the battles with like, uh, other people. It's just kind of neat that there's a lot of different ways to play it and there's no necessarily wrong way to play it. Yeah, that's true. You can be as into it as you want or as casual as you want. Yeah. Yeah. I'm always surprised when I talk to other people to see how differently they play the game than I do. Cause I'm very much more the collector. Mm -hmm. I'm not big into the battling, the battle league. I only do if I have to, the team rocket battles, I only do when the research requires that I do it. And I play more, uh, I call it lone wolf. <laughs> I, I don't do it for social aspects. I do it because I like animals. Like that's, yeah. that's the draw. <laughs> yeah. It's a good reason. Yeah, I like the collecting aspect more too than yeah. like the actual battling and stuff. I'm with you. We're, <laughs> we can call ourselves the three lone wolves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like, I actually have just like that as one of my pros is just being able to collect all the different Pokemon and then how there's different Pokemon that live in different areas. So when you're traveling, it just makes it kind of like traveling's already exciting and fun, but like it makes it a little more exciting and fun that is true yeah because i remember when this game came out we went to ireland and like we were playing in ireland and <laughs> stuff and i got like a bunch of pokemon that just didn't live in the united states so it was kind of neat yeah. to like just see what they were and stuff like that that is a cool aspect. but yeah i like the animal pokemon aspect of it too and like it always is like funny to me how some pokemon look like okay this is clearly like a cat you know or whatever and then some of them it's like what the heck <laughs> this is not inspired by any animals this is inspired by like a dish brush or something i don't know <laughs> or like a, a log or i don't know yeah. yeah i think the joke was that they ran out of animals so you'll find one that looks like an ice cream cone or a yeah. trash bag or a sand castle and it's like okay i see i see where you're yeah going. and then they have like those like metal ones like some of them look like magnets or like just little like bolts or like whatever yeah. <laughs> but i like seeing all the different ones too yeah what's something else you like jen I originally liked the events and stuff that they have to kind of draw in so it's not as as boring as just like the, the daily, we call it grinding, like where you just mm -hmm. catch Pokemon to get XP and level up. They do a lot of events now as well, but they're a little bit overwhelming in the in the frequency. But the events usually will feature Pokemon where you can get one that you may not have gotten before that that's usually how they will release a new Pokemon or they'll release mm -hmm. a new feature is by doing different events. So one of the events that I used to really like around New Year's, they did an egg hatching event and it was all the baby Pokemon. So it oh. was all the cutest ones and it was the only time in the game where i would use actual money i would buy incubators <laughs> to be able to hatch all the eggs because i used to play it for free and then i realized that this is mainly my only hobby and i don't spend money on many other hobbies and a lot of people do very expensive hobbies and i'm like you know what i can spend 99 cents on <laughs> a, mo a monthly event um, yeah. and that that be it so i you deserve it I, I, still, I still play the events but they're not all free anymore <laughs> yeah. yeah that's cool i mean i spend like just 70 dollars on one game and that's like you know a month or two so <laughs> yeah. i think you could probably spend as much as you want on pokemon go and it'd be fine <laughs> yeah yeah and you've gotten like a ton of hours and gameplay out of the game so yeah you're worth good. it yeah yeah, yeah. So one of mine is just the fact that it's really easy to get into. There's like a low bar as, as far as like, you know, figuring out what you need to do and stuff like that. But at the same time, there's kind of a high bar as far as like all the different things you can actually do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just getting into it is really easy and it's, it's pretty accessible for a lot of different people. There's always going to be like Pokemon like around you that you can catch. There's always like a grunt who shows up that you can fight if you want. There's always people you can battle. And it's free. Yeah, it is so free. So you don't have to pay to get the yeah. game initially. It just, it just has that easy bar of like, this is easy to pick up and get into. I like that you can do stuff with your friends. So like there's the player versus player. 
So if you just kind of want to play with your friend, like do battles that way, you can. Or if you just want to trade Pokemon with your friends, you can't. You have options. Like you can battle or you can just be friendly. And like, yeah. 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 Like that's kind of cool. cool that they like, because those are kind of newer things that they've added. Because when the game very first came out, you couldn't like trade Pokemon with your friends and stuff. Yeah. I remember that. I remember like being like, okay, I got all these Pokemon, but then I can't battle anybody. I can't do anything with them. And then they eventually did add those features. But by that time, I had kind of stopped playing. So I didn't see those features until way later. <laughs> I'm like, oh, cool. They've actually made this a lot better. <laughs> One of the newer features that they released this past year was to be able to collect postcards. And so that is the, um, the gift giving feature. So if I send you a gift, I try to spend interesting pokey stops when I can so that when I send my friend gifts, that they are, you know, visually interesting or cool. I think you guys have sent some cool ones. I have a, another friend in Georgia who um, was able to get the ludicrous mural in Atlanta. And she, so she sent me that yeah. as like a gift. And you can pin those as postcards in the game. So you can collect oh, postcards cool. from all the different places that you or your friends have gone. You can pin your own too, which I <laughs> obviously have yeah. when I go to Lego in Disney World. But one of the things that I like to do is you can put virtual stickers on the postcards. And so my friend and I, um, who play together a lot across the country, we try to send each other postcards and stickers that match. So that if it's like a mural of a dragon, then we try to put a dragon Pokemon sticker on it so that it matches. <laughs> so she has like something cool to like pin in her postcard collection. Uh, that's so cool. that's been it's been a really cool ad that they added this past year that I enjoy. Oh yeah, that is neat. I actually had that as a pro too. Uh, me too. <laughs> and uh, I really like how, yeah, you can send each other, yeah, that, like digital postcards. And then there's also just the fact that any Pokemon you catch has like a tag on it that says like where you got it and stuff and what time you got it. So you kind of have those as mementos too. Mm -hmm. So I kind of like that it has all that, like, here's a, here's a postcard from this person on this date. And, you know, and uh, here's a Pokemon you caught on this date, on this place. So it's kind of nice to have all those as mementos. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I like the stickers too. They're just cute. I haven't thought about trying to match them though. <laughs> That's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, normally I just pick a postcard and just whatever sticker is just up. <laughs> yeah. Um, another thing I really like is that you can have your little companion pokemon your little buddy that you get to pick that just kind of walks around with you and stuff like yeah. i don't think that was there at the beginning and i like being able to switch it out to like different pokemon whatever i think's cute and like pretend like they're my little pet <laughs> <laughs> i noticed jen you have like a really huge one right now <laughs> i do yes do you still have that one i do and there's you have certain strategies as to why you make Pokemon your buddy. If you yeah. get them to best buddy, then their XP gets elevated and it gives you some, some extra benefits, especially in like battling and stuff. So you'll see a lot of people have really strong Pokemon or like big Pokemon as their, their companion, just so that when they use them in battle, they're stronger. Yeah. The other benefit is if there's a Pokemon that you don't have enough candy for and you, you can't catch it. You make them your buddy and after so many kilometers and you get candy. So usually you'll see my buddies are, are Pokemon that I need candy for. But I've gotten to the point now where I basically have all of them that I can get. And so now I have to switch to the other strategy of like making all the beastly Pokemon my buddy just so that I can like have a strategy to it. I've always said though, if I'm retiring off into the sunset, we were talking about how you have like specific like date stamps and stuff on Pokemon. I have an Electivire that I caught on my birthday in Las Vegas one year. And I'm always say that that's going to be my retirement. Pokemon <laughs> buddy. Oh, just to leave like as a permanent <laughs> yeah, buddy. Yeah, just as, the sentimental yeah. favorite that, that I have. I, his name is Angus, if anybody wanted to know. He goes, <laughs> so I, I do have a, a retirement plan for Pokemon Go too, including <laughs> who my buddy will be at that time. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I know for a while I had a Magikarp. Is it Magikarp or Magikarp? I always call it Magikarp. Magikarp. Yeah, Magikarp. Yeah, that's probably that's, awesome. that's probably correct. <laughs> I had that as my buddy because like you need four hundred candies, I think, uh, to evolve yeah. that thing, and it didn't really help at all because I still 
didn't end up getting <laughs> even close to 400 babies. So <sighs> maybe one day. Yeah, maybe one day. So do we want to move on to the cons? Yeah. So I know you really like this game, Jen, but do you have anything that you kind of don't like about it or wish they would improve? Yeah, I, I'm i probably Niantic's biggest critic, so I, <laughs> could, I could go on forever about how there are things that I wish they would do. Well, tell us how you feel. <laughs> so the first one is they recently, just over the past year, released a separate app called Campfire to allow chatting and communication between Pokemon Go users to be able to coordinate raids and stuff. Most people use Discord or GroupMe or another, mm -hmm. you know, separate app. I really wish that the interaction, it was like an in-game chat versus having to have a completely different app that connects to the game. Yeah. Yeah. That was a big down side for the majority of the time the app has been out is you have to like real world communicate with people outside of the <laughs> yeah. game to be able to play with them in the game mm -hmm. but they they tried to resolve that with campfire and now they're releasing another companion feature called routes that's a whole another thing but i really wish that they would put everything in the game to use all in one spot versus breaking it out yeah but at least they did give us that one thing where there is a feature to be able to chat with each other but at first it was invitation only and not all people could use it yeah so they and tried like, this is seven years later yeah. you're just not getting that it's so strange yeah that they made a whole nother app just for that aspect instead of just putting that aspect into the game itself from like a security and a safety standpoint i think they were afraid of you know, inappropriate activities or people communicating and not being forthright about who they are. But the first time I got on the campfire, I was getting tons of invites from randos and I'm like, nope, close <laughs> it out. I, yeah. I don't even use it because like I said, I like to play lone wolf anyway, but yeah. there's really to me no difference. I'm still getting creeped on by weirdos in a separate app. So what's the difference if it's in that app versus the original? One? Yeah, good point. Know. Maybe they can claim some distance between that and Pokemon Go or something. It's like, no, it's not oh. Pokemon Go. It's this other app. That's the problem. We'll get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I if know. I have to have multiple apps, though, play one game, I'm probably just going to like give up. <laughs> yeah. I don't really like the, I mean, I guess this game kind of has to have microtransactions because if you're going to have your game like As a free go game. on for several years long, yeah, have to have money coming in. But I just hate microtransactions in general. So. Yeah. I mean, everybody does. <laughs> One of the reasons I personally usually end up putting it down for a bit is just because the game can get a little bit repetitive. Once you've kind of caught most of the common Pokemon in the area, then you're just like, you know, you're consistently releasing them. Yeah, if you're just trying to harvest like experience and candies and stuff. And the mechanics of catching and battling Pokemon are pretty simple, which is great for, uh, you know, for new players, but it can get old after a, a bit. You're just throwing those same Pokeball throws and the battles, you know, you're just tapping the screen and then occasionally hitting the power button. Yeah. Yeah. Those repetitive aspects can kind of get to the point where it's like, all right, I've done this like, you know, hundreds of times now. Thousands, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll piggyback a little bit on the microtransactions. I had mentioned earlier that they used to do free events, and they were fewer and farther between, which I know probably makes the game boring for some people, but it made it a little bit more special mm -hmm. when the, the events were staggered a bit. And then still being able to play them potentially for free. They have now the game split between things that you can buy with in-game coins. So you can get coins in-game by doing certain things. So you still can do it all for free. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the events now, you have to pay money. You can't pay with coins. So it doesn't give you an option like, oh, let's say you have 200 coins yeah. and this event costs 99 cents. You can't exchange 200 coins in game or let's say 99 coins in game for a 99 cent event yeah the transactions only work one way and that's for you to give them money <laughs> yeah they can give you money <laughs> so now a lot of the events are 
you're paying real money and there's no other choice to it yeah. if you want to get the research or get the special Pokemon. So now a lot of people are equating that Pokemon that you're kind of really playing the event for to the money. They're mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm about to pay 99 cents for this to get a shiny Squirtle in sunglasses. Is he worth 99 cents? Is he not worth 99 cents? And yeah. obviously Squirtle in sunglasses is, but there are other Pokemon that the price point isn't exactly there. And 99 cents is the cheapest. There's games that I've, I think I paid like $7.99 for a Genesect. I mean, and that's what it equates to. It's like I played out the full research and went through the gameplay, but at the end of the day, I paid $8 for a Pokemon is what it really comes yeah. to. Yeah, that's true. I gotcha. Yeah, not everyone can be affording to do that, especially if you're a kid. <laughs> Another con I have is kind of what you mentioned. It's like, yeah, there's an easy bar to enter the game, but if you really want to know how to do everything in the game there's quite a lot of research that you kind of have to do a lot of googling a lot of asking of your friends to play to like figure out what certain stuff is and how to do certain things oh yeah there's yeah, just like sure. if you want to know everything about this game yeah you're gonna need to really dedicate some time to just like researching everything yeah, there's definitely a high bar. There's definitely a lot of stuff I still have no idea about in this game. Yeah, same. And I've played it quite a bit. Like, even today, we, like, sent you that text, Jen, with that screenshot of that egg at the gym. We're like, well, what do we do here? Because we read through the raid stuff, but it still didn't really mention the egg. Like, it mentioned raids, but I don't know. It didn't say that the egg meant raid. I don't know. Yeah, it meant there was eventually <laughs> going to be a raid at a specific time once the egg hatches. I guess. Yeah, it was like I've, you were just supposed to already know. Looking that at the egg, that. I'm like, okay, you obviously get an egg. Look at this egg here. Yeah, come on. <laughs> but I guess not. No, there's no egg. There's no egg for you. There's yeah, the the boss Pokemon that you're going to be fighting is in the egg. I think. <laughs> so for me, I think we kind of already mentioned it, but it can be a little bit limiting depending on where you live and work. Yeah. I know one of the appeals is it gets you out of the house to walk around, but it's going to be way easier to get resources if you kind of live or, or work near a pokey stop. Yeah, if it's convenient. <laughs> yeah, if it's convenient. So, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, that's all the cons I have. Do you have anything else you want to vent about, Jen? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to uh, I'll try to contain myself. <laughs> Keep the vibes high. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good to hear the cons too. Yeah. You know, we're trying to give a authentic perspective. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think my, my perspective is I don't want to say unique because I think I'm special in some particular way, but I'm actually not a gamer. Yeah. So the fact that I've played this game consistently now for as long as I have is kind of a testament to anybody can play this game, but I have found over time that I've also gone years without realizing particular facets of the game. And it's really frustrating once you find out that there's something that you had been missing or that you could have done differently to make things easier <laughs> yeah. over time. And so it's hard when they release new features and there's not a manual, there's not instructions on what you're supposed to do. And you're kind of scrambling with people that you play with to try to figure out what you're supposed to do and unfortunately your peers aren't always the most um <laughs> they're not great communicators and so you ask them a question and then they give you a three-word answer and you're like okay that's not enough but you're doing me a favor so i'm not gonna ask yeah, again yeah. <laughs> how i'm how i'm supposed to do this so there has been a lot of i feel like stumbling blocks over the time that i've played just because i may not know how normally something is supposed to flow or like with the leveling up and what that means and how things should be working or what I should be working towards. Cause I'm just over here in the corner like, we I've caught Pokemon. Yeah. <laughs> caught yeah. Pokemon. And you know, everybody else is over here maxing out their levels. Mm -hmm. If you look at my stats for as long as I've been playing, the amount of Pokemon I've caught is low compared to everybody else because I'll shiny check. It's, it's like a term in the game where you, click on a Pokemon to see if it's shiny. If it's not, you click off of it. Mm -hmm. I shiny check a lot of Pokemon. And of course I work a full-time job. So it's like, I'm not just running around playing all the time. So yeah. you know, I'm playing like when I first wake up, I say, Hey to my buddy, give him some treats. 
And then, you know, I may log on a couple of times throughout the day and then play again at night. So even though I've played the game seven years and I play it every day, there have been some days where I've played it for 10 minutes. There have been other days during events where I played it for seven hours. And it just varies, you know, depending on what you're what you're trying to do. But the advantage is also the disadvantage. Yeah. Being able to play it however you want also means that you may not be playing it to the level that you could be if you would have known that you should have been doing something differently. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the disadvantages of being a trio of lone wolves too. <laughs> no, don't really like talk to a ton of people about playing the game. Yeah. But I'll say that's just like, I feel that way all the time being a gamer and like, I'm pretty experienced, especially, you know, compared to other people. But it still happens to me all the time where I'll get like halfway through a game and I'll be doing something the way that I think is the way you should be doing it. And Eric will just walk in and be like, oh, why aren't you doing this? <laughs> and it's like something you would know if you've played games your whole life, but like I haven't. So it's like, wasn't it obvious to me. And then I'm just like, oh my God, <laughs> I just made the game like 80% easier. I've been struggling. <laughs> you know <laughs> and it's just like that little thing man yeah there are definitely things in games where they kind of you know they'll make it towards someone who's played a lot of games where it would be intuitive to me but it would definitely not be intuitive to someone who didn't necessarily play the same amount or have the history and all that stuff all right so let's do some strategy i'm sure jen's got a lot of strategy for us <laughs> We should do our strategy first because I feel like we're going to have all the really simple stuff and Jen's going to like knock it up to like level 99. <laughs> well, you know, strategy number one, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> always. It's not, it's not a strategy. <laughs> That's always my strategy. <laughs> I'd say mine is just the rewards for doing daily tasks and research tasks are pretty good. So you can work on those if you want. Yeah. But you'd also don't have to. <laughs> It's but if you do get. want XP and rewards and stuff, yeah, that's yeah. a good way to yeah. get it. Bonus Pokemon and items and stuff. <laughs> Pretty cool. I can go if you'd like. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah good. So mine kind of piggybacks on that as well, though. So right now the goal is to get to level fifty. And the way to do that is after you hit level 40, you have to not only get the XP that's required for every level, but you have to do level specific tasks. And they're usually pretty difficult. Not all of them are, but a lot of them are very difficult. So sometimes you might even get to the XP before you can get the tasks completed. Mm. So trying to get to that point is what what I'm working on right now. So really paying attention to what the research tasks are and playing the game to whatever that task is. And there's a lot going on, especially with the different events and stuff. So just trying to figure out, okay, what am I actually going to focus on will help you continue to play the game and not get bored. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. And I like a good checklist. <laughs> <laughs> It really does help. And some of the stuff, yeah, it's like right now my stuff is kind of easy. I had to delete my old account and start over. But I'm already almost like at the same level as Eric. Yeah, so. it's nuts. It's <laughs> like, what the hell? Like I'm like 25 or something. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, Nikki's starting a new account. She'll be like at level five or six or something. She's already freaking 20. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sometimes it's easy stuff like, you know, use berries to catch like three pokemon or something yeah but then sometimes yeah it's a lot more difficult i like, feel like I'm those sure. early levels come a lot quicker too yeah that's true for sure so i actually learned this from jen back in the day <laughs> but apparently curve throws don't really like have that much of an impact on whether you catch a pokemon or not so if you don't want to do them don't do them it's not yeah because they are harder <laughs> yeah. i always try to do them and they just like go off the <laughs> off the page like they don't even come close i've kind of just gotten into a habit of doing them but unless they're for like a task or something a research task yeah you don't, you don't really need to do them i pretty much always use a berry or a pineapple uh whatever whatever it's called pineapple pineapple yeah something whenever i catch pokemon because like you get those so often the fruit through the poke stop spins yeah. so it's like why not just use them every single time and plus the, uh, what was it called? The pin naps? Yeah. They like cause the Pokemon to drop more candies. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. You want those and candies because that's how you evolve and power up well, Pokemon. Some of the Pokemon need like a hundred or 400 candies to evolve. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> uh, how about you, Jen? 
I think one of the things that I didn't really pay too much attention to in the beginning was how you really have to nickel the, and dime the game to get XP. So like if you throw a curveball, I think you get like 25 extra XP, or if you throw a great throw, then you get 50 extra XP or whatever it may be. So whatever you're trying to accomplish in the game, you kind of have to use the the tools at hand. They have lucky eggs, which if you enable a lucky egg, it gives you double XP for the time that that lucky egg is going. They have star pieces that if you enable the star piece, it'll give you double stardust for that time frame. And you use Stardust to like power up your Pokemon to mm -hmm. be stronger. So mm -hmm. I didn't really pay a lot of attention to that stuff in the beginning because I'm like, oh, I don't care. I don't really <laughs> want to battle. I don't know if there's a reason at the time to like move up level wise, but they created a reason to once they, the game used to cap at 40 and then they upped it to level 50. So now there's like a little bit of a difference in how you can play the game if you're below level 40 mm -hmm. or if you're above level 40. So when I started Joss's account, that was like a grind to try to get it to 40 as quickly as I possibly can because things are different in the game. It's, it's nuanced, but things are different. Your Pokemon aren't as strong. The Pokemon that you catch aren't as strong. And then there's certain things you just can't do the same. So just kind of knowing those nuances and knowing that if you do things a certain way, it is more beneficial. Again, you don't have to. I didn't do it for <laughs> yeah. very, very many years. But if you do know about those things and use them to your advantage, those are other ways that the, you can make the game interesting and fun to play at the same yeah. time. I guess they're like, well, if you get up to level 40, you're pretty hardcore. So we'll give you, <laughs> we'll make it a little different for you guys. Yeah, true. That's all the strategy I have. Do you have any more, Eric? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I always forget about the berries, but you know, <laughs> kind of already mentioned this, but yeah, if you have yeah. berries, use them. Yeah, use those berries. It's a pretty good piece of strategy <laughs> for me. Yeah, the, the inventory piece I think is pretty big because I'm a hoarder. So not mm -hmm. only do I like to collect animals, but I hoard all the supplies because I'm just spinning pokey stops all the time. Yeah. And it's... It's like important to remember to, I call it finesse. I don't know why, to finesse your inventory. So dump the stuff you don't need so that you can spend more stops to get the stuff that you do need. Yeah. Because if you have like a lot of the the raspberries or whatever that you may not use because you want to use the pin app or the banana one or whatever, mm -hmm. then get rid of the ones you don't want. And then you have more space to get the ones that you do want. So like I'm constantly going in and deleting stuff that I don't need or I don't use to be able to spend more stops to get the stuff that I do want and I do use. Yeah, I do that too. Because uh, I hate getting that. Your bag is full of things. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, man. And the, the inventory just isn't that big in general. I mean, 300 items seem, sounds like a ton of items, but it's not. It's Yeah, it fills up really quick. <laughs> That's what I used a lot of the coins for in the beginning. So it's like when you would get coins from the gems, from leaving your Pokemon in gems, I would use them to get more space, storage space in the inventory and to get more Pokemon storage space. Okay, so you can use coins on that stuff? Yeah, so you can That's increase cool. those with coins, not with you don't have to spend real money. Oh, nice. That's good. That's good. <laughs> That's all I had for strategy. Uh, do you have any more, Jen? No, only just like we were saying, you really play the game how you want to play it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people do the Battle League to get uh, tons of XP and tons of Stardust. You can also get some exclusive Pokemon in the Battle League. There's a Pikachu and a Luchador costume that's super cute that if you get to a certain point in the Battle League, you can like get a, a catch experience with that Pokemon. And then there's some um, Avatar items too where you get like a Luchador kind of costume that you can dress up as. So there's there's lots of other parts of the game that you can play and get a lot of XP really fast. And those just unfortunately haven't been the aspects of the game that's been as interesting to me. And that's why I'm still not at level 50, even though I've been playing literally the whole time. Yeah, that's okay. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so moving on to the future. So uh, the first thing I have is in June of this year, 2023, Niantic, you know, the people that make Pokemon Go, announced that they're laying off 230 employees. Dang. And they're reorganizing their business model. So I don't know if that means anything for the game, but yeah, just 
probably not a great sign for the company. <laughs> yeah, I hope that doesn't mean they're going to like start trying to milk the, the games more. Yeah, hopefully not. Like we said, the game is still getting up, like major updates and new features added pretty regularly. And we talked a little bit about this, but they added routes recently. In fact, it was earlier this week they added it, <laughs> which is kind of cool. At least the week we were recording this. And I guess what, what it is is just these different paths that connect the different Pokestops. They can walk to get like bonus items and special encounters, but I have yet to actually seen a route. I'm, I'm not quite sure if you're supposed to make them yourself or if they're supposed to kind of already exist. It's similar to, um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the aspect of the game where you can create or submit Pokestops. They're called Wayfarers and only certain players of the game can submit those. The routes are similar right now, so only certain players are allowed to submit routes. And so I haven't encountered one yet, but I have a friend that I work with who is creating and submitting routes right now. And those are the only ones that I know that exist in this area. So I would have to actually go to one of the ones that he's already submitted. So it is, to me, it is still future because I haven't gotten to use that aspect yet. Yeah. Even though I am to a part in the research that says that I need to do that, I'm like, well, there aren't any yet. <laughs> so I'll do that as soon as somebody creates one for me. That's true. So it has to kind of get going a little bit before it's like a big thing. Yeah, I got you. Another thing that I found is they just released a Pokemon Go Plus device. It kind of looks like those bracelets you get like when you go to Disney or something, but it uses Bluetooth to link with Pokemon Sleep and Pokemon Go smart device apps. So, yeah. And that's one of those auto catch devices that I mentioned that are actually like a sanctioned one. I have an old model that looks almost like a like you said almost like a fitbit or something like that yeah um, and it's an auto catch and an auto spin for pokestop so you can connect it to your game enable a session and then it will auto catch and auto spin pokestops for you so that you don't have to have the game open there are pros and cons to that too and the cons for me outweigh the pros so i don't use mine as much mm -hmm. but if you buy the new version that they just released there's a special snorlax in a cap pokemon that you can get as a reward and it could be shiny so a lot of people are equating that to say if you buy this for 55 dollars, that's how much you're paying for shiny sleepy cap snorlax yeah <laughs> yeah but you so, use it for more than that <laughs> um just real quick i, I know we kind of went through the strategy but what is the difference between like a regular pokemon and a shiny pokemon just for our audience who might not know, um, and maybe me. <laughs> one, one is cuter, duh. <laughs> yeah, usually they're a different color in appearance, and they have little sparkles that come off of them, and they're rare. So oh. after I get to a point in the game where I've caught all the Pokemon that are available at that time, then I'm chasing shinies. And that's why I mentioned earlier, um, to, I shiny check things. So I'm clicking on Pokemon to see if they're shiny. I already have a million Growlithe. I don't need yeah. another Growlithe. Yeah. Am I trying to, you know, it's like, is this one shiny or, you know, whatever it may be. And not all Pokemon are shiny. So they're not necessarily like stronger than other Pokemon. They're just like more rare. Just more rare. Yeah. I guess that's why they ask you, are you sure you want to trade this shiny one <laughs> yeah. in when you're, and I was like, yeah, sure. <laughs> now I'm like regretting my choices yeah, should, oh no should i have <laughs> traded the shiny one like is this i didn't realize it was weak it was only had like <laughs> 30 cp i was like i don't need that <laughs> but now i'm gonna keep all the shiny ones <laughs> okay good to know shinies are super valuable probably <laughs> so i think we talked a little bit about pokemon sleep but yeah i guess that's kind of a new app right that just came out recently yeah i haven't really heard that much about it so I don't really know. But my understanding is you like you download it and then you like leave the app open when you sleep and it's supposed to like monitor, I don't know, like your snoring or something. <laughs> okay. To see if you got a good night's sleep or not. I'm not sure. I'm just guessing on how this is. You're guessing. Oh yeah. You're totally guessing. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's all I know. <laughs> I don't, I know possibly wrong things and just the fact that it exists. <laughs> 
<laughs> but is that does that go with Pokemon Go? Yeah, like there's they're a con connected. I think there's a, a slight connection. I okay. think you can get some Pokemon and Pokemon yeah. Go from Pokemon Sleep. Right. Yeah, I think it's connected kind of the same way that was it Pokemon Home? There's like another thing where you can pass things back and forth and there's something similar about the gameplay with the Pokemon Sleep where you get rewards or I don't know if it's XP or whatever, but a couple of people that I know that I talked to on Discord have started using it and I can hear them using the same phrases as like what you would play Pokemon Go where they're talking about like, oh, it registered that I slept for this amount of time on this day and I'm trying to do this streak and like so I guess it's somehow tracking something and potentially giving you rewards for it, but I don't know exactly what. That's so interesting because I'm like, the connection between Pokemon Go and Pokemon Sleep is just like weird. I don't know. It's a weird idea. Yeah, they just want to control your life completely. Exactly. <laughs> they want to control you when you're awake, <laughs> when you're awake and they want to control asleep, you yeah. when you're asleep. I'm going to go down the rabbit hole and say it's a big conspiracy. <laughs> yeah i wonder what it would have been like if that guy that caught eleven thousand pokemon in one day also had pokemon sleep oh my gosh <laughs> right it's like you could probably just trick it into believing your sleep how smart can it be yeah i think yeah. there are ways to do that already <laughs> <laughs> yes there are and that they were already discussing it the guy was saying that he tricked it into thinking he was asleep at his desk at work because he wasn't moving <laughs> and it thought that he took like a 30 minute nap or something <laughs> that's awesome clearly not doing anything yeah <laughs> all right so jen you're probably wondering if we completed your challenge that you gave us <laughs> oh yes i don't know if i did or not. i think i got I th four days four days is my max i definitely had a seven day streak but i don't know if i did all the research i was supposed to do it was to get, you just know. just remind us of what the challenge was again it was you had to like spin a pokestop you had to catch a pokemon and you had to do like a research task is that right yeah or daily task seven yeah. days in a row yeah, yeah seven, like seven days. days in a row yeah that was it. So you can you can look on your app if you go to the research, the today tab under that, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a section for streaks and it'll tell you the streaks for the Pokemon catch and the streaks for the Pokestop. And it's a it's a seven day circle, a line of circles. Oh, I yeah. see. If the circle is filled in then that's how many days your streak is and if it's empty that means you haven't done anything for that day but it starts over every time you've done nothing okay <gasps> then i did do it ha ha <laughs> if you do the research one you'll also see that on your field tab so like it'll show it'll give you like a stamp each day that you complete something and then at the end of that there's a box mm-hmm and so if you do seven, then that box will open up and give you like a reward Pokemon. So oh, okay. so I think I did actually compete the challenge, oh, wow. but I did also write a rap though. So oh, oh, I guess you, know. you gotta, we gotta hear it anyway. Yeah. So <laughs> since I wrote a rap, y'all have to rap too. That's just the rules. <laughs> Is that the rule? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I would argue that Pokemon raps are the best raps because there's endless content to talk about. Exactly. <laughs> We actually went to karaoke the other night at um, Blue Ghost Arcade, which is like a cool barcade nearby. And someone did the Pokemon rap <laughs> for their karaoke oh my God. song. <laughs> Where they rapped all the names of the, that rap? Yeah. Were they all the names of the Pokemon? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I would have died to see that. That would be so awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. All right. Well, I guess we're going to be rapping then. All right. Yeah, let's hear it. my mama goodbye now i'm on the road and they all wonder why can i protect the world from devastation can i unite all the people within our nation will i get them all before i run out of time from geo dude to mr mime now years on the road grinding every day starting to hear what they all say she's obsessed but she's the best it's a game she's gotta play 
Texas to Vegas, everywhere in between. Catching acts you and snore lax, but don't cause a scene. But they're all so cute, Pollywag, Pikachu, and Sand Slash. One thing is clear, gotta do it better than Ash. Word to your mom. So you join Team Mystic, we're cool, calm, artistic. Stay optimistic, cause now you're a statistic. Blink, you'll miss it, I'm just being realistic. Don't go ballistic, Team Rocket is a joke, shit. When they talk, they sit, they probably sit home in it. Drop with a learner's permit, blues gonna send a hit. So legit, we need a pull, pit like Monty, Cute, and Capulet. Wake up in a cold sweat, Blanche will make you never forget. Be my heart still open. Desire, Professor Willow. They say I'm over the hillo, but I got skillos to pay the billows. I got Nilo of good willow. That's willows below my millows. There's spheros and feroes, and I hear those zeros are heroes. Climbing like Marfernos on dinos. It's fine though, so lie low. I'm high though, I like pie dough and wine hoes. I was sign yo to say bye bro, so bye bro. Word to your papa. Oh, good rap, y'all. <laughs> Yeah, it was true fun. gangsters. <laughs> yeah. And thanks for rapping with us, Jen. Yeah. Thanks for being our guest. I loved hearing your raps and how different they were from my raps, but they were all the best because they're all Pokemon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, but our episode is coming to an end. Yeah. I guess and the end of our fourth season. Also, our season is coming to an end. Wow. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is the last episode of the season. Congratulations on four seasons. Thanks. Yeah. This is like our 60th episode. Yep. And yeah, I'm super excited. But after this, we are going to take a little bit of a break. And then we'll come back with season five in like a couple months. But we do have a special guest for the first episode of our next season. Our friend Andrew Dowell is going to be our special guest for the first episode of the next season. And Eric, do you have any guesses as to like what game oh, he might pick? I did not. I was actually really good. I didn't look at his email ahead of time. Me either. Um, My guess was Mega Man, but that's only because no. I know he was at that Mega Man tournament with you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I have no idea. All right, well, let me click in this email right here. All right. After long and thoughtful deliberation, I've finally reached a conclusion about what game i like you both to play. This game is near and dear to me for about 27 years now. Okay, nice. so it's an old game. Yeah. A game that was a huge part of my childhood and one I still play regularly. A game that simply never stops being fun. Man, these expectations are high. <laughs> that game is Twisted Metal 2 oh, for the nice. original PlayStation. Yeah, I remember that game. Man, I haven't played that in forever. I've like never heard of that the, game before. <laughs> the thing I remember the most was like, I think it was a ice cream truck clown car thing. I don't know. It was like, yes, that's exactly the image that came in my mind when you said that. I was like the clown. It's the, it's the clown car. <laughs> so Jen's heard of it. I was thinking it was like you know rock band or something like Twisted Metal. Ugh, rock, <laughs> rock on. No, it's like uh, it's like a vehicle. Like you're killing each other in these vehicles. Okay. And it's pretty fun. Sounds fun. Yeah. Okay. The challenge will be shared between both of us. All right. Beat the tournament with each contestant and see everyone's ultimate wish. <laughs> <laughs> ultimate wish. Okay. I have no idea what that means, but I'm excited. I assume that's like their ending. Oh. Um, maybe they like an ultimate move. Maybe like they win the Kombat. tournament and they get their ultimate wish. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I'm All right. Well, we'll find out. All right. All right. Until next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.
So you know how I was saying that I play like Lone Wolf? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The caveat to that is the Discord group that I'm in, you have to in-person verify with one of the administrators on a certain interval so that they know that you're actually a person and you're still active. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that when I first joined it. And once that verification came up, I was like, oh man, I'm actually going to have to go find somebody that does this. And there was one day, there was a group of people that I saw in the parking lot of the building at my work. And I saw that they were chatting like on the group too. And I was like, oh, this is my chance. They're literally right there. I can go outside and get verified in person. It's the first time I'd ever done it yeah. because I wasn't even on that app for many years. I walk out and they see me and they're like, oh, who are you? And I'm like, oh, I'm Jen Red 316. And he goes, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> Because they had seen my name in all the gyms. At that point, it had yeah. probably been for six years, awesome. five or six years. And they had never seen me, but they saw me all over the game. And they probably must have thought at that point I was like some kind of bot or oh something. God, that's awesome. So I walk up and the group of people are like, like treating me like I was famous. Like if they were somebody, <laughs> I was somebody that they knew and they had known for many years. And they finally met me. And I was like, yes, this is the coolest moment of my Pokemon life. Oh my God. <laughs> You're amazing. like a celebrity. <laughs> I didn't know we had a Pokemon Go celebrity on the podcast. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, it's like I tell, I only tell that to people who could truly appreciate how funny that I think that is.